Jake, Bill, are you there? We are here. Great to see you guys and uh, thank you. It's awesome tuning into some of these uh, little events that are going on around the country and to feel that energy as you guys talked about. And it's great to have Bill, Bill here and feel his energy as well. Um, Bill is a guy who um, I've just recently um, started to build a relationship with. A handful of months ago, um, walked on the property and we got an opportunity to sit down um, here at home on the property and get to know each other. And um, his uh, alignment with purpose, um, his story of winemaking, um, his uh, story of coming in as an outsider and some of the adversity that he's faced along the way, everything um, was so in line with our story and with our purpose at One Hope that I just knew that we had to do something together and that we would do something together. And we're in the um, very early days of our journey as partners and collaborators together. And uh, I'm so excited to have you on today to get us kicked off and, um, and be that uh, kind of fireside chat. Although today is a little too warm to be by the fire. So we're on the couch together. Bill, thank you for joining us. Jake, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. First and foremost, congratulations on the newest generation of winemakers in your family. So congratulations on that. Uh, other than that, I'm just really happy to be here, really happy to share the story and, you know, tell you a little bit about how we got here. Yeah, well, so um, you moved me the first time that we ever sat down. You really did. And I think um, anybody who gets to meet with you, they feel your presence and your aura and your energy. And you can, you put it into your wine, obviously, you put it into your brand. Um, I want to just uh, let you start out with sharing a little bit of your story and how you got into the wine industry and also tell us about longevity and also Phil Long, um, the two uh, marquee brands in your portfolio and, and particularly your story of longevity. Well, cool. Well, thanks, Jake. Uh, how much time we got? Um, <laughs> you know, my okay. journey has been really interesting. When, um, when I went to college, I had no idea wine was even made in this country. And um, the guys we saw in agriculture, I thought they just dealt with animals. I had no idea it's just, that was this industry. And I got a degree in architecture and I just pursued my career as any normal career. And as Deb and I started getting out and experiencing the world, we started tasting wine and started learning about wine and having a little more wine. Um, Southern California wine is just a commodity. It's just something you get at a grocery store, or, or at least it was back then, let's say that. Um, when we relocated to Northern California, wine is part of the fabric of life here. You can't drive in any direction up here without ending up in wine country. So inevitably, when we got out and explored our surroundings, we'd end up in wine country every single weekend. And the love just seemed to grow, the passion just seemed to grow. So we started making wine in the garage. And that first little barrel of Syrah that turned out to be what I thought was going to be the best wine in the world turned out to be crap, but we didn't stop. Um, so we kept going and we opened up Longevity in uh, 2008 in the Livermore Valley. In 2018, we're the Livermore Valley's winery of the year. And the Longevity brand has now evolved into uh, Phil Long Reserve as well. Wonderful. And first of all, congratulations and amazing to go from that starting in 2008 to now the third largest brand in Livermore. Um, great neighboring ABA, um, amazing wines coming out of there. There's some really beautiful and known brands that have been there for a long time before you. And so to be to number three already, the future is bright and um, and your wines are, are wonderful. I've gotten the opportunity to try a handful of them, including this one and the one that everybody who's here with us today is gonna to get to try. So um, thanks, thanks for sharing that with me. Um, now, um, give me a, a little bit more um, on the winemaking side and how you created um, the name Longevity and, and the idea behind that. And then also you have this beautiful piece of art on your label. And when I saw it the first time, um, I think I, I shared with you that we're going to be building the heart of Napa Valley on the yes, front. Yeah. And I was like, man, this is one one of the coolest hearts I've ever seen. It's so okay. unique. And um, can you can you share a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So 
Um, when Deb and I were making wine in the garage, we were, th when we were thinking about trying to go commercial, um, we were throwing around names. And um, I came up with, what about long family sellers? And she looked at me and said, what family do you see over here cleaning up the stuff that you would need? <laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, so Deborah came up with the name Longevity. Um, so we launched Longevity in 2008. It was a very classy, elegant label. But uh, I remember we had some wine in Costco, and the sommelier said, "Yeah, it's so dark. It's kind of a black hole between two lighter labels." So we went to rebrand in 2009, and I designed the current heart that's on the label uh, for Deborah because I had been giving her glass hearts. For Valentine's Day, every single Valentine's Day, and she amassed this huge collection. So if you look at the heart closely, it's made up of more hearts, grapevines, and grapes because it truly represented uh, who Deborah and I were in our life together. Um, that same label has been seen on many, many TV shows. I don't know if I should say them out loud or just 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 bypass, but it's become the iconic label of what longevity is. Uh, unfortunately, we lost Deborah Payne in cancer in 2019, but I did get to take her with me to see that I got the whole heart. I'm sorry I'm dressed up, but I got the whole heart on my entire sleeve, so she knows she's always going to be with me. She's always going to be part of the journey. That's beautiful, man. And every bottle, she's every bottle. a little part of it. And I, I had forgotten that she actually created the name um, and uh, kind of took took your original vision and uh, and made it, right. made it right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. That's that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I know that's a, a cause that you've helped support over the years, um, yes. the Les Guardian Group, and then, uh, and I'm sure a handful of other things. Um, tell me about how um, purpose has played a role, um, you know, both um, before and after uh, her passing, as you think about what wine has the opportunity to do when it brings people. Well, it's interesting, being in this industry, as you well know, you're approached daily. Not, not like weekly or daily, multiple times for donations in the wine industry. And you really have to pick and choose the causes that you can get behind. Not only that, you got to think about your budget as well. But, you know, when she passed away, instead of having anybody bring flowers or, or send flowers, we had them donate to the Lust Garden Foundation because they're a foundation that I specialize in pancreatic cancer and the prevention of pancreatic cancer. So it was a great cause oh, wow. that we donated to, and we had you know all of the friends donate to, and now we work directly with the Lust Garden Foundation on virtual wine tastings where uh, a big portion, I think the last one was 100% of what we uh, got back goes right back to the organization. Oh, wow. It started out regionally, but now we're starting to work with the nationally. So that's a cause that we're really going to stand behind and keep, uh, keep donating to. I love that. Um, now you, thanks for uh, bringing up little Jack. Uh, it's been such an amazing handful of days here. And we we're a, a little earlier on, we had a few minutes together. We were already starting to talk about um, having, having kids and, and I know your son, um, probably similar to you, um, didn't necessarily see himself getting into the wine industry, but it sounds like he's getting, um, you know, pretty deep into it with you uh, and and getting into the press room with you as well. He's um, actually he's been amazing. Uh, you know, I always thought he'd want to participate, and he's like, no, I like beer, like, okay, whatever. Um, interesting enough, we were both interviewed um, by Google for a piece that they wanted to do, and I never knew it until that interview. Um, they asked him why did he get involved, and it was after Deborah was diagnosed with cancer, and he told me he didn't want me to. It was after Deborah was diagnosed with cancer, and he told me he didn't want me to go through it alone. I had never known that until that interview. So. Um, it's been a blessing. It's a great, great opportunity to work together. And, you know, now that I'm doing more of this and less of that, he's doing more of that and doesn't want to do this. <laughs> so yeah. it's a great collaboration and right. I can depend on him to run the water when I'm out on the road. That's awesome. How many years have you guys been, uh, has he been working with you? 2016. Yeah. So yeah. over five years together yes. now. Huh? Absolutely. That, yeah. That must, uh, when did you hear that in an interview? Uh, 
This was a, yeah. like a couple of years ago. I yeah. had never known. Yeah. Um, until I heard when they were asking him questions, and I kind of blew it away. Not to be too vulnerable with you, but did it bring you to tears? Uh, you yeah, to tears? It did. Yes. I had almost right now. Yes. <laughs> yes, I felt that, and you, and then you turned around and moved me to tears. So I think it's the dad thing and the lack of sleep right now. I'm yeah, the emotions fighting <laughs> through, and I'm like, wow, that's beautiful, man. Because um, the first time you shared uh, about your story with Debra, that touched me, but now getting to hear, you know, the next steps and how it's brought you plus your son. Um, getting to work together with your father is an amazing thing. I get to build this place with my dad and and uh, right as he was retiring and um, it makes this place extra special. So I can only imagine what working on a piece of art together with your son has meant to you. Yeah, so sure. No, it was a great experience. Um, so just to flip it over to uh, a, uh, a lighter, simpler question. Um, we're going to be tasting some of your wines today. Um, when you think about winemaking style, and now it's very much um, shared and, and collaborative with your son, it sounds like, mm -hmm. um, what, um, what have you kind of established as your style of winemaking, a profile of wines? Is there anything in particular that you go for? You know, and it's interesting as a winemaker, you, you always start out, make, you're on this journey, you start out making what you like. Yeah. That's always where it kind of starts out, is what you like. And Deborah was even fearful. Well, what if nobody else likes it? I was like, well, we're not going to get very far. Um, but that's where it starts. But then you start really getting in on the quality trail and how can you better yourself? How can you better your wines? How can you better your process each year? You're still making something you like, but how do you make them better? And this journey is really all about trying to make the best wines we can with the resources we have. And uh, it's just been an amazing uh -huh. journey. So as far as the style, it's it's try to knock it out of the park every single bottle we bought. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, I I often will say like make wines that you'd be proud of. During those special holiday moments and illustrations, but also on a, on a common Hi. dinner um, that you're getting together around like wines that you want to drink, and that um, also, um, uh, as you noted, okay, so balance with the customer demand, kind of too. Right. Place place. Um, and when you can find that sweet spot, that's where, where it really okay, is. It's, um, it's true to stylistically what you want to create, but also right now. Um, it's the palate right way for okay. what, the, what the market wants. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, for sure. You know, Are there any moments days. where you and your son have to see eye on making a certain wine, where, you know, one of you really, wasn't willing to stand down on, on our decision. <laughs> I, I don't think we've ever, you know, butt heads to an extent. Um, I, I think he's at the point where he's reminding me of things that he knows are in my uh, realm of responsibility that I haven't got to, and that irritates me. Yeah. Like, Who's this you're sitting with right now? Uh, his name is Phil Long. He's a great thing. He's got a great thing. He's got a great thing. Um, there's some spinach dip up here too. That's cool. I it's cool that, for you that to admit that, that too. Some that some oh, sure. He's uh, he's probably pretty fresh to it and all excited and wanting to move faster. And I bet every once in a while you slow him down at the right time. Just a little bit. Yeah. He, he's a great learner. He doesn't he doesn't make the assumptions. Yeah. He does listen. He's a great listener. So so I have a lot of confidence in his future. He's going to be good. Yeah. One of the smartest uh, people that I ever met. Um, told me, hey, it's okay to be wrong. Just don't be confident to be wrong. You know, <laughs> and so and so it sounds like uh, you know being being curious and uh, and willing to explore and uh, every once in a while this too is a big part of it. So yes. you gotta learn from your mistakes. Yeah, it's part of longevity now. Yep, um, so um, so uh, let's uh, talk about the Association for African American Vintners. Um, you're the president there. Um, very very worthy cause. Um, a um, a group of people who have not been, um, you know, well represented um, relative to population um, in the wine industry, and I'm sure uh, along the way, um, this is a, a subject matter close to your heart. Um, uh, I'll open it up for you. What's what's important to you um, from a personal level? What's important to you from an organizational level when it comes to um, representation, diversity, inclusiveness in the wine industry? Um, it's, it's been an interesting journey. I never set out to be 
a black winemaker. That's one of the big wines. But once I was in the industry, when you started realizing just how few there are, and for those of you who don't know, African American winemakers, wine owners, make up less than 1% of the population of winemakers and owners in this country. It's, it's diversity is missing. Wow. And yeah. uh, the Association of African American Vintners was established back in 2002 by a gentleman named Matt McDonald, who was recognized because he was a phenomenal winemaker, he made great pinots in Sonoma. And he said he used to do events and people didn't look like him. So that's when they started to band together. So, um, I mean, when you look at the industry as a whole and you look around you, you look around where you're sitting and ask you, we are having wine with every single race, creed, color, everything you're drinking the wine. How come the people that make wine don't look the same? So that's kind of what AAAB's focus is, is trying to create diversity, uh, create inclusion, um, create the opportunity. The only way it's going to change is for more younger African Americans and people of color to get in the industry. And we're trying to pave that path with scholarships, assistance, mentorships, and that, that's really the goal. Very cool. Um, and such a worthy cause, um, something that, you know, there was a lot of communication and conversation about, um, especially over the last couple of years and a couple of years ago, and it's easy for that conversation to uh, kind of die down a little bit because um, there's so many other things also um, grabbing your attention and a bunch of other worthy causes these days everywhere you look. Sure. Um, but one of the things that we talked about a lot um, in our company um, was looking inward and trying to focus more um, on inclusion. And we did a recent survey actually with our CE community um, who's all out there um, at watch parties, you're watching from your home. Um, the group uh, who earned it through the rewards to be over in the fermentation room is going to be drinking wine with us sure, very shortly. Sure. Um, that in that recent yeah. survey, 45% of our college so entrepreneurs who have a heartbeat of our brand and our community are minorities. Oh, and um, it's, a, it's a really important thing um, to us. Um, I think it's what makes our community very special. Um, it's diverse. It's representative, actually, uh, of the country uh, more than it is representative of the wine industry. Um, you know, with celebrating Mari and all the incredible wines that she's created for us over the years, um, less than 5% of winemakers are women. And then when you told me that statistic, that less than 1% um, were African American, um, and why makes a color, I, um, it made me pause. I mean, it's, you're talking about less than one in a hundred. You're talking about out of 11,000 wineries, less than a hundred. Um, and so uh, you are carrying the torch for a group that um, is relatively small representation, but um, we're hoping as we look back uh, over the next geez, five years, decade, if you go quick, um, do things like double that number, triple that number, and um, and I think it's um, it's a, a very worthy cause. There's uh, not nearly as much um, I think attention that's been put to it here in the valley. And um, one of the commitments that I made to myself as you um, left the property was I'm going to do my best to make sure that I just share that message, that we get that message out because we have a voice, we have a platform here, we are represented by. Um, a, uh, a very, very diverse group of people, not only um, females, uh, over 98% of our cause entrepreneurs are women, nice. over half of them are moms. You're not finding those people represented in starting their own wine business. Yeah. And so with that, I'm sure you faced adversity as you were getting into the wine business. Did you ever have a time where um, outside of, uh, you know, you'll probably share adversity in general, but where you felt like um, your uh, race um, uh, was uh, working against you or created headwinds for you? Oh, sure. Um, and you're right. You know, in the wine industry, <laughs> uh, the saying is that there's not something going wrong, there's something wrong. Um, so there's always going to be uh, challenges in the wine industry, but uh, as Deborah and I, it's part of our journey when we started getting out and really because we started an online wine club first. We got a wholesale distributor's license. So we were out in the wine country tasting, holding two full-time jobs, going to 13 wineries a weekend, trying to figure out what's the next club release. 
And I remember a couple of incidences, one in particular, um, where I walked in by myself and there was no one in the kitchen room, but there was a lady on the phone helping a customer. So I, I just kind of stood there and waited patiently, expecting her to look over and make eye contact or something. Yeah. Never looked at me. Oh, wow. And I just sat there waiting patiently. And then another lady came from the back. Like, I thought she's, oh, we have a customer here. She actually got on the phone with the customer, and the two of them were helping the one customer on the phone. Neither one of them ever looked at me. Wow. Wow. And it's yeah. experiences like that. And I've had my share of experiences, and I'm sure there's a, a lot more out there to be shared, but that's the one that really rings to me. Wow. Right? Yeah, even as a line customer, let alone a line maker. And um, talk to me about like the adversity of the wine industry in general, uh, oh, because man. that's where I feel like you and I we can bond. Uh, and I I love listening to you, and part of my commitment is opening up and listening more to people who have um, had uh, different journeys. Um, and got to see the world through a different lens because I've come to realize that um, one uh, perspective is not that many. And, uh, no. <laughs> and But where we have a common understanding is what it's like to be a little guy in the industry. And almost all of us are little guys. And, and if, if you're not, you started as a little guy, if you started it. And you uh, found I'm, it. I'm still a little guy. You know, there's all these lessons we learn. Um, you kind of have your idea of what it's going to be like getting in. Honestly, I didn't have I didn't have a clue. Um, people come in to the tasting room now and say, "I want your life. I really want to. I really want to be you." And I, at this point, I ask them if they brought their checkbook <laughs> because we can make it happen. But I think my biggest challenge was, you know, I was so focused on making great wine, but there's a lot of people who know how to make great wine in this industry you have to be able to sell that wine. It's not just about making the great wine, right. it's about selling the great wine. And to me, that was a hard lesson to learn over time. Um, you have to have the great wine, but you gotta have the same skills when it comes to movement. So yeah. that was a hard lesson to learn. Yeah, well, it makes sense. And one of the nice things about now having your son helping on the winemaking side, and it um, sounds like uh, you've got to put your selling shoes on uh, a little bit more because of him holding it down. Too, so. Yes, for sure. Yeah. You know, he's, he can hold things down, and I can get out on the road and get into different markets now that we're distributed across country. And uh, I'm, I'm having fun with it. It's work, but it's, it's still, uh, I'm still having fun. Yeah, um, that's great. Uh, when when I think about um, the love that you and Deborah shared and how you um, made it come to life in living art in the form of wine and consumable art. Um, is there anything that she ever shared with you about the, um, the wine side or longevity wines or anything that sticks with you to this day or a saying that she would have or anything like that? that is well, her saying was, um, live long and love. That's what she came up with. That's what, that's kind of been our mantra. Um, but you know, the, the, the seller. Might have been my workplace, but it sure as crap was her winery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She was it's the face of the winery. She was the one that greeted people. She was the one that everybody knew. Um, it's interesting. We even had another diversity story. I had uh, a great assistant winemaker once, and um, they they always confused him as her husband. Because I was just the black guy that worked there, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but no, no, no. How often did that happen? It, it was a regular happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but it was her place, which is cool. And, you know, her picture is still up where it was and, uh, when she was there. And, uh, that's not going to come down. Yeah. When things like that happen, you have a, a great attitude, obviously. You're laughing about it. You're comfortable talking about it. And I yeah. think it's important for us to get comfortable talking about those things so people are conscious about that, you know? Yeah. Um, but um, the, uh, how long did it take you to get to a stage and where um, you started like 
being comfortable in this type of a situation to openly share about things like that? Uh, you know, even back then, Deborah and I would look at these situations and we kind of laugh um, because it's like, why would you assume that? Yeah. I mean, because she was this petite, gorgeous little blonde, and I'm I'm this big ugly black guy. I, that may be why I don't know. Um, but we could we always looked at it, we laughed about it, and uh, I kind of kid myself. That's why I put our picture up. <laughs> I can prove so, with others. We all think you're very handsome. Uh, so you know, uh, you're a, 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 a mighty guy with big paws, and man, you have a presence. So, uh, but uh, I'm I'm sure similar to my wife, she was much better looking. Than yeah, oh yes, absolutely. Uh, but it's interesting for me. I was always comfortable talking about it. It was never an uncomfortable subject. But you know, in the general public, especially in today's environment. Um, you know, Black Lives Matter movement, it it changed things. People started getting comfortable with the conversation. Yeah. And I think that's a you know, it's a tragedy to take us to where we needed to go anyway. Yeah. But I'm glad that we're making progress and it's you know great organizations like Wow well, that that help this thing moving right along. Yeah. Um do you have a favorite wine in your portfolio or one that really stands out to you? Actually, this is one of my favorite right now. This yeah. and, the, and the Alexander Valley as well. These two tabs I, I really, really enjoy. Um, you know, due to COVID and switching things around, we do a pink Pinot you know, Grigio called Domato, which we've been sold out for ever because we decided just with COVID not to make, uh, just kind of bypass the year. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting that back in the tank this year as well. Awesome. Yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful cabernet. Yeah, um, I, uh, I've enjoyed it the first time that we opened it, and I'll say like um, I don't know if it's uh, post having my first child or whatnot, but this wine's tasting so good right now, and I haven't been drinking much wine the last week, so yeah. it is tasting amazing um, right now. You caught me in a great moment, and as you and I know, um, the the mindset you're in and um, how you're feeling and the situation and the place can make the wine uh, oh, a great wine. You know? Yes, and for so, sure. It's all about the experience. Um, is there anything actionable um, outside of uh, allying with you, um, collaborating with you on um, some fun uh, upcoming stuff um, that we can do as a community to keep opening doors and uh, making the wine industry more accessible and, and more approachable for a more diverse group of people? I mean, I think you guys are doing a lot already. Um, I think back to our first conversation, you know, there are several African-American wineries right here in Dallas. Um, a lot of people don't know about it. Um, so, you know, that support, supporting them, um, I think it's really, really important. Yeah. Um, any in particular that you want to shout out besides uh, Bill Long? And oh, if I say. Yeah. Then you have to say, if I, say yeah, and if yeah. I forget one, I'm going to be screwed. So <laughs> I'm just going to support all of them. Yeah. Well, hold it. If you're wondering, um, uh, about some of those organizations, people can go to the AAAB yes. uh, website, right? Yes, aavintners.org. aavintners.org. And we'll make sure that we share it with the community. Um, we're excited to share your story with the community. I'm excited that they got a, a little bit of a taste of who you are, um, not just the wine, but a taste of the story, um, the passion, the purpose behind it. Um, I, um, I'm so excited to collaborate with you on our first project, which we're going to share more. This community will know about it first, but it is a, a wine and a collaboration that um, has been in the works for a while. Um, we're one of the lucky uh, and wonderful things we have in common is um, the support um, of another great family in the wine industry, um, Joey Franzia, his dad, Brett Franzia, um, all the stuff they've done at Bronco. Um, not only you know, the largest owner of vineyards in California, um, the largest owner of, of organic vineyards in California, um, and working on all kinds of other sustainability practices when it comes to packaging and all kinds of other stuff. They've been such a great partner to both of us, and we're really fortunate that Joey uh, brought the two of us together. And he's one of those guys who is comfortable being in the background on things like this, And um, but he's done a lot of good, and they, they rarely ever talk about it. Um, and so, we get to talk about it. Okay. Yes, absolutely. No, I'm very, very blessed and grateful for the opportunity to partner uh, with such a great, two great organizations and, you know, move my brand forward and keep telling the story and keep making great wine.
Um, before you and I uh, do a little toast here, is there um, just uh, opening up the, uh, to whatever um, uh, you would like, is there a, a quote or um, one last thing that you'd like to share with our community while you have a little over a thousand of them uh, here? <laughs> wow. Um, you know, the one thing I didn't really mention, um, you know, people ask sometimes, how did the industry get so non-diverse? Yeah. And I think the key thing people have to remember, when the Europeans migrated here, they had great minds in their pocket. Yeah. African Americans didn't get here that way. Yeah. And that's how things started. But now we have the opportunity to make things equal. It's probably not going to happen in my life, but we're going to try to make as much progress as we can. Damn, yeah, that's a deep way to end it. Um, I, I can't wait to pour wines with you um, over in the fermentation room. I can't wait to um, drink more of your wine over time and share your story with people um, and have our platform and our community um, telling your story. I'm really, really honored. Um, yeah, you're a great man, and, uh, thank you. and thanks for uh, being a great partner. Thank you. Cheers. And Cheers. thank everybody out there as well. I look forward to meeting each Let's and every one. Cheers. 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 That's good stuff, man. I like that. Oh, yeah, that me too. That is good stuff, man. Is right. That was a treat. <laughs>